Interval training, I'm sure you've heard of it, maybe you don't know how to do it though. So in this video, we're gonna break down how you should structure an interval session and how to pick your paces for it. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you some example sessions that you can put in your training straight away. So the basics of interval training are that you have a predetermined set of high intensity bursts. Now these can be either distance based or time based, and then they are interspersed with rest or recovery periods in between. So a super easy example is 20 seconds flat out, 40 seconds easy, repeated five times. Or if you want to do it by distance, you could do 200 meters flat out followed by 800 meters easy. That's a really simple explanation of what an interval is. Now we've got two examples there and one used time and one used distance. So which is better? Well, I fully believe this is up to you. It sort of depends on what you like working with. Now, if you've got a specific race and a specific interval goes with that, that can be very useful. However, it really depends. So for me personally, I much prefer to base my intervals on distance. If I base all my interval sessions on distance, I will get a better performance and actually have a better quality session out of it. So that's the way I lean. You may however be the other way. It's best just to try both and see how you get on. The example sessions at the end will have an option for either time or distance and you can try both and see what works for you. Rest or recovery between your intervals. Well, this fully is gonna depend on what intervals you're doing. So if you're doing some longer intervals that maybe aren't as hard, you're going just over your threshold, then you probably want to do some sort of recovery between where you jog lightly or maybe walk. Whereas if you're doing a sort of super maximal effort, so something that's flat out essentially, you may find that between these you just want to rest because it's really, really hard to go absolutely flat out. You might have quite a few of them. You might be doing 10 bouts of 30 seconds flat out. And between that, you might want a minute to 90 seconds of absolute rest. So it really depends exactly what you're gonna get out of it. So we'll have a look now about picking paces and the different aims of each interval and why you might want to use them. And then we can talk about the rest and recovery between them. So it's time to pick our interval speed. And I really think that this is determined by the aim of the intervals because not every interval session is the same. You could be doing five times five minutes or you could be doing 10 times 30 seconds. They're gonna be very different because you're not gonna hold the same pace for five minutes you are for 30 seconds. So you're gonna get different things. And I sort of boil these down into three aims and let's go through each one now. So our first aim I'm calling just above threshold. These are your longer intervals that aren't max effort aiming to go just into the red zone. For example, something you might wanna pick here is like a sort of tempo pace, which would be about 10 seconds per mile quicker than your 10K pace. Or if you work in kilometers, that's about six seconds per kilometer faster. And this is just enough to push you in the red zone. It's not really horrible pace and you could definitely sustain it for five to 10 minutes. So you could easily do five by five minute repeats. Now, with this sort of session, your recovery could actually be quite moderate. You may only want to dip a little bit into the green zone. You could say, stay at the top of your aerobic speed, really. So your recovery could be sort of four to five out of 10 for maybe a minute to two minutes, or it could be longer if you want. Our second one is gonna be slightly shorter, but slightly more intense. So five times three minutes, or maybe even 10 times two minutes. This is where you're gonna push higher into that red zone, not maximum pace. This is often called high intensity interval training. So this is the sort of hit idea where you're gonna go hard, not maximum, but hard, and then you're gonna have this recovery. What you're gonna find is your recovery is gonna be more of a sort of two to three out of 10, or you may even want to walk. You're not gonna be fully resting, but you're definitely gonna be recovering more. And also you'll find that your interval to recovery ratio will be closer to 50 50 here. Back in number one, you'd be looking at more 75% interval, 25% recovery, whereas this is closer to 50-50. Then we have three, which is going to be our absolute flat out, also called SIT or super maximal interval training. The whole idea of this is that on the intervals, you are going absolutely flat out. So something like this could be 10 times 30 seconds, absolute maximum. And then here, your rest period is definitely going to be a rest period. You may want to walk or you might just want to 
to stop and shake it out and stretch. The whole idea of these training is that you're really pushing, you're actually trying to sort of change the biomechanics of how you run by building muscle strength. You're adding to your peak and mean power by running at these absolute flat out speeds. This is fully red zone. It's very, very hard. The mental game comes in, but they're really important. In this instance, you might want a 30 second bout followed by a 90 second recovery. So again, your balance to interval to recovery has shifted again down to 25% interval and 75% recovery. So you're having a lot more recovery, but you're trying much, much harder on these intervals. So there's our three aims. So picking paces for each, you're sort of just above threshold, as I said, is about 10 seconds per mile quicker than your 10K pace or six seconds per kilometer. Your hit training is gonna be 10 seconds per mile quicker than your 5K pace or six seconds per kilometer. And then your sit training, your super maximal training, that is just gonna be absolutely flat out. Just leave everything on the table, full send. Now you've got three things that you could possibly aim for and I'm sure you know which one you want to pick. If you're going for a shorter distance where you need to be sprinting, you're definitely going to be looking at the super maximal training. If you're going for something more like a marathon, you're probably going to be looking at just above threshold to sort of keep that ticking over and going for longer. Now, looking at those aims, let's give you some example sessions. All of these sessions are going to go with either a mile warm up and mile cool down or a 10 minute warm up and 10 minute cool down depending on whether you're working by distance or time. So for distance, for aim one, we're gonna look at 800 meter intervals with 400 meters recovery periods. And then if we're gonna change that into time, we're gonna be looking at three minutes at interval pace and one minute at recovery pace. And then we're gonna repeat these five times. If we're looking at aim two, which is more of your high intensity interval training, we're gonna be looking at something closer to 50-50. So these could be 400 meter intervals with 400 meter recovery, two minutes intervals with 90 seconds recovery, and we would repeat these four times. Or if we're looking at our super maximal training, which is aim three, we're gonna be looking at 200 meters flat out, followed by 400 meters of recovery, or we're gonna be looking at 30 seconds flat out, followed by 90 seconds of recovery or maybe a slow walk, and we're gonna do 10 repeats of those. There's an example session for each. Depending on what you're looking at, go and try one out, see what's better, distance or time, and work it out for yourself. It's all gonna be down to you and how you like to do it. As I say, for me, it's definitely distance that works, but try both and see what you prefer. So that's how you should structure and pace your interval training. Now, if you're still unsure about why you should be doing these intervals, then you should have a look at this video up here, which will give you all the benefits of interval training. And if you wanna look at putting it into a training plan and progressing over time with intervals, then have a look at this video down here. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of when I upload. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I love getting back to you, and I'll see you in the next one.